Hello guys, Martin here, UK guy in USA in the International Scale Modelers Forum. Um, yeah, I'm come to a little low. I've finished my Junkers J87. I've got um, a, I've got the C47 Skytrain and a Verlinden 120 milliliter figurine of a 101st Airborne paratrooper coming on its way. That's not going to be here till the end of next week though. It's a 10 de days delivery. Um, so in the meantime I'm just going to do a quick inbox review of a aircraft that I plan to build for the ISM Vietnam group build which starts next month sometime September and ends December 31st. Um, so the choice of aircraft I'm doing is the Douglas A1J Sky Raider in the US Air Force colours. So I haven't opened it yet except take this cellophane off and uh, so let's get on with it. Let's open the box and see what we have in this bad boy. Tamiya kit so uh, I'm guessing it's going to be pretty good. Box art's nice. Got a lot of uh, ordnance on this craft which looks exciting. Oh let's have a look. Okay, there's one version, looks like it's a night fire, it's black underneath. Um, I'm going to put my glasses on. This one's for the 56th uh, SOW 602nd SOS 14. And uh, the second version with the light grey on the side for the 56th SOW 602nd, which is the same squadron. Uh, but SOS 29, not 14. Um, Alright, anything else on that box? No, nothing. Okay, so, box is packed to the top with sprues. First one is the fuselage. Um, look like air brakes. Um, cockpit, interior details, and then inside there is a separate bag with the um, cockpit canopy. So that's one sprue. Uh, there's a couple of sprues in here which looks like it's full of ord ordnance. And then the stabilizers. Is this a big long range fuel tank? I don't know. Or is that a, uh, is that a, uh, what's it called? What is that nasty stuff they use? The napalm. Was that a napalm bomb? Not sure. All right, so oh, one, two, three, four sprues in that, and that would be one five. There's another sprue six, and there's a little bag of the rubber uh, bushings that they use for the propeller, which I love because you can just slip the propeller on at the end, right at the end. And then here's another bag with another two sprues. Uh, the upper and lower wing assemblies. Oh, and it's got some flaps, movable flaps on this one. Cool. I like that. As many moving parts as possible, I love. Um, and then instruction booklet, history of the aircraft. And I'm doing it because it was used during the uh, Vietnam War. Um, says that in 1965 when US Air operations in Vietnam became more aggressive hundreds of sky, ro sky raiders including the A1J were deployed to the 14th and 56th special operation wings armed with the Mark 82 Mark 117 bombs 20 millimeter wing mounting cannons and rocket launchers and the sky raiders were used in a wide variety of combat missions alright so Typical Tamiya instructions. We have paint um, requirements there, AS colours for the external camouflage, then the X and XF colours for all the other bits. Um, starting off with the cockpit and the pilot, comes with a pilot, this one does. Um, and then assembling the fuselage, the typical route that you do, and then engine cowling. It's got a detailed engine. The cockpit looks nice. 
it's got side um, consoles, it's got the joystick, nice looking seat, pilot, and then the uh, instrument panel looks detailed, and then we have the uh, the head up display, the HUD, that looks pretty nice actually, engines detailed, radial engine, nice engine cowlings, um, <coughs> we have it's showing the underside undercarriage doors which look like they've got some nice interior details on those and wing assemblies front and rear stabilizers wheels look nicely detailed as well with struts and uh, in all oh wow goes on the back we have 18, 18 stages of instructions and a ton of armament options one two three four five six there's seven pylons on each wing and then there's the under under the fuselage uh, drop tank so there's a lot of choices there with the armament which is great I like a fully loaded plane looks mean aggressive which is what I want um, and here's all the armament, the ordnance choices on uh, assembly in stage 18. So it looks like it's a pretty detailed kit, which I'm happy with. The more stuff that's on it, the happier I am. Okay, day cows, I'm going to have to undo this. Oh, it's just staples. Have a look at these. Um, well, they're matted down and they're very thin. Um, and then the carrier film is very little, it doesn't extend much beyond the uh, colour of the decal. It's almost at the edge, right at the very edge of the decal colour, which is good. And this one's got the um, logo on the front called Socket to them. Stars and bars. They're looking nice. So I'm happy with those, the way they look. Let's put those back. Painting guide. Showing the air numbers, which are spray cans. They just do a conversion to other colours. I have a lot of colours that will match these, I've already checked. So um, I'm okay with painting this. It calls out the AS13, 14 and 15 for the upper side, which is like a black green, an olive green and a tan, US tan. And on the underside, a US light grey, the AS16. And there's the two versions, one's light grey on the side and one's black on the side. Um, some painting instructions. Oh, and this looks like a, a mask, full size mask. So I can photocopy this at full size and cut it out and use that as my masks, which is great. I like that. I won't use the master, I'll photocopy it. And, uh, you know, I usually take a couple of photocopies that I get through uh, when I mask using these. So that's nice, I've included that. And then inside the box, just important information concerning this kit, telling you read carefully, blah blah blah, follow instructions, etc. etc. Alright, let's get into the parts. Let's cut these bags open. Oh, it's a staple, single staple. Let's remove that staple, I don't want it scratching the parts as I pull them out. Let's start with the wings. Okay, they're looking very crisp. Typical Tamiya, I love Tamiya. This is why I'm ordering Tamiya kits now. I'm not seeing any flash whatsoever. They are clean, crisp, looking tight, sick. And these beautiful, fine recess panel lines and rivet details 
né? Beautiful. One more can you ask for? That looks awesome. And then on the bottom we've got some nice panel details here, more details, rivets around the wheel bay areas, lots of lovely detail. And on the uh, flaps, they're looking great. Oh god, I'm getting excited already. Can't wait to start this. I'm trying to push this through as quickly because we're already at ten and a half minutes and I don't want this to drag on. So let's take these staples out. It's a propeller. I don't see any flash or parting line mismatch or anything on that. I mean, for that, those contoured profile surfaces, imagine the part lines, the two halves coming together, got to shut off nicely. Um, so you don't have any gaps on the part line that would cause flash, well there's no flash so they shut off nicely. Um, it's part of the engine detail here, looking nice. It's like a gear around there for a propeller. Nice panelling details around the cowlings. Radial engine, that's got some nice little detail in there. Uh, the flaps around the rear cowling are slotted out. They're not solid like you get with Airfix, and then you've got to use post shading, pre shading to separate those panels. But here they are separate. There's some very delicate shutouts there for those cores to protrude through and shut off around there without getting flash. So it's pretty good uh, tooling by the mold maker. So let's put that back in that bag and then we'll go on to the next bag. There's a lot of parts to bear with me guys. This looks like it might stretch to about 15-16 minutes. So I'm going to rush as quickly as possible. Get those staples out of the way. This is all the ordnance. Again, I'm not seeing any flash or sink marks. All the jet pins are on the inside, which will be sealed when those halves are put together. Here's the other halves. Nice details. Again, they look great. Forgive me, guys, if I'm rushing this up now. As you can see, a lot of ordnance drop tank, a fuel cap, lots of lovely detail as well on the um, pylon for the drop tank, it's gorgeous, and the stabilizers, this is a really nicely detailed kit and again no flash, I'm not seeing sink or warp or anything, god don't you love them, um, don't you just love Tamiya? Some bombs there, and there's a big the uh, stabilizers on the rear of the bomb. These will be the upper halves of the rear stabilizers. Again, more pylons with gorgeous detail on them. The wheels with nice detail. Looks like the wheels are slotted, to, so they can only go on one way because of these features. That's nice. I'm not going to put them in the bag because I want to get to the last bag before it's too late. That staple out of the way. We've got two bags in here. We've got the clear canopy. Let's look at the fuselage. Again, fuselage looks gorgeous, really crisp. I don't know whether you're seeing that. Beautiful panel line detail. Really nice, and then the console. There's the uh, instrument panel, nicely detailed. There is a 
decal for that, but I'm going to paint that. I prefer the paint. Nice looking uh, jet to seat. Uh, pilot looks okay. And here's the side consoles. Lots of detail on the side consoles. Buttons and dials and the instrumentation d d uh, gauges, etc. That looks nice. And uh, this looks like air brakes on the inside of the air brakes. So um, again, that sprue looks awesome. I'm not seeing any flash, any warp, any sink. Any jet pins are all on the opposite side to the seam faces, which is great. There's your that bag, so keep that over. And then the final bag, let's have a look at this. It's going to be quick. It's a canopy. There's just a little bit of wavery around this end. Apart from that, it's crystal clear. There's no knit lines, weld lines, or blemishes, voids, or anything. They look per perfect. Sorry about that, guys. The uh, camera cuts out. I ran out of space, so I've just deleted an old video of it off the camera. There was only 16 minutes left on for that video I just did. So anyway, we went through all the parts. The last thing I was looking at were the canopy pieces and they look crystal clear. There's just at the front side of the main canopy, uh, the rear canopy that slides back. That um, just has a little wave. It's where it's part of the form where it flattens out, but it just kind of gives it a little sort of wavy, wavy look to it. But it's okay, it's crystal clear. So I'm not concerned. Everything looks beautiful to me. I'm really excited about starting this baby next month for the uh, Vietnam build. In the meantime, I don't have any models to make unless I go to my local shop, pick something up to fit in till I get my uh, um, C47 Skytrain and my 101st Airborne Paratrooper next Friday. I'm guessing it's gonna be here said 10 days to deliver. So until then guys, I hope you've enjoyed this quick review um, and by the looks of it, I'd highly recommend this Tamiya Douglas Sky Raider before I've even attempted building it because I'm just not, I just know that with Tamiya kits, they're going to go together like a dream. So I'm going to have a drink to that. A nice drink of Biltmore Estates House Red Reserve Wine. Cheers guys, enjoy the day, cheerio, talio, chocks away.